Hello, my name is Tracy Morton, Director of Population Health, and I'm joined today by Deborah Lane, Senior Program Specialist. Today, we're pleased to share with you tools for your rural path to value presented by the National Rural Health Resource Center. The center, as we often refer to our organization, is a nonprofit dedicated to sustaining and improving healthcare in rural communities. As a leading technical assistance and knowledge center, our work over the decades has sought to optimize the assets present in the community with a focus on the five core areas on your screen. Supporting strategies to maximize the health of the community is the work the center has supported since its inception in the mid 80s. Now we are supporting our nation's rural hospitals, clinics, networks, and state and national organizations and partners to, to transition the healthcare in our country to one based on value, seeking population health. In December of 2010, the US Department of Health and Human Services launched Healthy People 2020, which has four overarching goals. Attain high quality, longer lives free of preventable disease, disability, injury, and premature death. Achieve health equity, eliminate disparities and improve the health of all groups. Create social and physical environments that promote good health for all and promote quality of life, healthy development, and health behaviors across all stages of life. The launch of this program and the progressive move within the healthcare industry moved the term population health out of the domain of public health agencies and made it a widespread term among healthcare providers. Over the past decade, there has been a recognition that volume-based purchasing for healthcare services is fueling unsustainable growth and the cost of delivery of care. This has led to a focus among payers and policy advocates to address the underlying issues that drive up utilization and the cost of healthcare. Population health also became a key component of the Institute for Healthcare Improvement, or IHI's triple aim. The triple aim, is defined, as defined by IHI, is better care for individuals, better health for populations, and lower per capita costs. According to IHI, the triple aim framework serves as a foundation for organizations and communities to successfully navigate the transition from a focus on health care to optimizing health for individuals and populations. The Centers for Medicare, Medicaid and Medicare Services, or CMS, updated their quality strategy, which for a time closely mirrored the triple aim. With respect to the triple aim concept, it's important to consider essential components that support population health management. After all, population health is a concept, not an action. Population health management is the action. These 12 essential components of population health listed on the screen focus on maintaining the wellness from a comprehensive, and systematic, systematic approach to delivery of care. Today, we'll be sharing with you a program and resources to support, to support primarily care coordination in the upper left corner of your screen. Through our work with communities, facilities, and networks around the country, the centers determined that population health isn't a destination, but rather a winding journey towards improved individual and community outcomes on health and wellness. On that journey, individuals and communities are seeking quality in the care that they receive. And they're seeking the cost of care that's agreeable. Healthcare providers play a role in the, as the primary provider or the primary deliverer of goods and services of health. They do not and they cannot operate alone to achieve a vision of community health and wellness. So the center has designed a program that seeks to integrate health services into population health. This multi-year program has objectives in the Path to Value program that move the participating healthcare providers from starting on care coordination journey to improving population health to sustaining an integrated clinical and community-based care delivery model. The Path to Value moves your organization from a focus on health care to a focus on health. A successful Path to Value in population health is determined uniquely by each rural community. With collaboration in mind, we support rural communities in a variety of ways because every community is different. Health and community leaders can better understand the changing healthcare landscape and find innovative solutions to address health outcomes as they help each other to learn and engage in designing and implementing care coordination solutions. Care coordination is the backbone or the primary essential component of the Path to Value program. And when the community comes together for planning, care coordination can address social determinants of health. This allows rural providers and their community health partners to do the important work of integrating care between primary care, long-term care, behavioral health, and other community services, achieving community-wide health and wellness. As Tracy described in the Path to Value, 
The foundational step is to either build or strengthen an organization's care coordination program. Once that foundation is built, the next step is to reach out into the community and develop collaborations that will strengthen care coordination. And that is when it's time to move the dial on the health of the population and move forward in developing sustainability. The center has two guides that will support your journey along your path to value. And I'd like to introduce you to those. The Care Coordination Canvas Guide helps an organization develop or strengthen their care coordination efforts, which are the first two steps on that path to value. The Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide begins its work at the end of step two and continues up the mountain, getting all the way to the summit where you are able to sustainably manage population health. Tracy talked about the importance of care coordination in the path to value. Before we go any further, I would like to offer some definitions. Definitions to establish some common ground as we move forward. As we develop the Care Coordination Canvas Guide, the two primary definitions that guided our work were, care coordination is community-based and integrated primary care, behavioral health, oral health, local health and community resources, to provide person-centered coordinated services. We were also guided by this definition. Care coordination is an opportunity to supplement the diagnosis and treatment priorities of medicine with clinical and non-clinical prevention and management in a system that also supports the social aspects of patients' lives that contribute to health. As we begin work on the Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide, we were guided by a third definition, and that is community care co coordination is a collaboration amongst healthcare professionals, clinics, hospitals, specialists, pharmacies, mental health, community services, and other resources working together to provide person-centered coordinated care. About five years ago, the center completed this study on care coordination and case management. The intent of this study was to support rural networks and healthcare organizations in an awareness and understanding of emerging care coordination models. In the next three years, we saw care coordination changing almost as fast as technology. So in 2017, we embarked upon updating the materials and the finished product is the Care Coordination Canvas Guide, published in May of 2018. This guide is what we use when working with organizations to develop new care coordination programs or refine the one that they have or expand into a new target population. The purpose of this guide is to help teams and partners conducting care coordination develop an effective program. This guide is also valuable to evaluate current efforts and make any improvements. All of the elements of this guide are available on our website, ruralcenter.org. With the information gathered during the initial study, it was very clear that there were four common components, target population, assessments, care teams, and care plans. The Care Coordination Canvas was developed based on this experience. Originally, it was designed to help organizations develop their care coordination efforts, but soon we found how organizations with mature and well-developed programs were using this canvas to evaluate their current efforts. We often use this canvas to set a common language for care coordination, for their terms, for programs and processes, and we often refer to the combination of terms, programs, and processes as a care coordination model. Let's take a look at the canvas. The first component is target population, which is improving the care, health, and reducing the cost for a specific group of people. The guide will take you through several things one needs to consider 
in regarding or in regarding to our target population. The second component is assessment, assessment tools, a tool or a survey used by the care coordinator to assess a person's level of need clinically and socially. The guide will take you through several considerations regarding assessments and give you several examples of types of assessments that can be used. Number three, our care plan. An individualized plan of care that is developed with the person, the caregiver for that person, and providers to identify a person's needs, then to create an approach to meeting those needs. The guide will help you think through what needs to be in your specific care plan and how it will be communicated. And finally, the care team. And this is the providers that are identified with the person and or caregiver that represents the clinical, behavioral health, and social services, long-term care, and community resources needed to help the person meet their goals and outcomes. The guide will help you in having a whole team of people to work on a person's health. As I have outlined, there are four components in care coordination in our canvas. Each is necessary for a successful care coordination model. We found that there are two additional elements that are critical for success, and these are integrated into each of these four components. And those two elements are communication and technology. A few points about how they contribute to care coordination. Let's look at communication first. How will communication happen in each of the quadrants? How will the person be engaged and in the loop? How will the care team be in a continuous loop? And closely related to, tech, to communication is the technology piece. Technology plays a significant role in identifying the target population. In the assessment, often technology is used to perform it, very frequently for storing it and sending it. Electronic health records play a major role in care plans and their development, and they are used heavily by a care team. Finally, there are two other important considerations with a care coordination program that are key to being successful in implementation and sustaining your program. And these won't be a surprise to anyone. They are plan to collaborate and social determinants of health. Care coordination may be the linchpin for healthcare reform, but collaboration is the linchpin to effectively doing care coordination. We need to reach out to many partners within our organizations and in our communities. Time spent listing those potential partners is valuable time. With social determinants of health, we have to always keep in mind that there are many aspects that affect a person's health. We need to identify all these factors that contribute to a person's health. There will be similarities within your target population, but often there are also individual characteristics or traits that need to be accounted for and addressed. These social determinants of health undergird the entire canvas. The components of the care coordination canvas will make a strong care coordination program. Whether you are from the clinical setting or the community setting, you have a role in care coordination. The guides provide you with guidance of things to look at and all of the different facets of each of the components. We also have developed an accompanying workbook for you to record your information in and your work in. So now we have the foundation. We have the pieces of a strong care coordination program established and have begun to identify community needs and community collaborations that need to be established to make your care coordination more successful. If we think back to the definitions of care coordination, this second step 
is where you began to move that needle and move toward community care collaboration. This is the stage that the second resource comes in. The Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide was published in March of this year. The purpose of this guide is to provide a framework for rural organizations to actively plan for sustainability of their care coordination programs that will help their program of your organization manage population health. It is built on the tried and true care coordination canvas, and it introduces you to the strategic marketing and thinking canvas and the product and service canvas. These two canvases have been used by the center for several years with great success to move organizations towards sustainability. The Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide will help you look beyond the walls of your clinic to become community oriented and sustainable. The guide takes a phased approach. There is some pre-work that you need to do, which will inform all three phases. The preparation phase uses the strategic and marketing thinking canvas. This preparation activity provides a time for you to consider who could use the care coordination services and what partners you may need to have to have a successful program. To prepare your organization to make wise decisions, you must have a clear, accurate understanding of the people and organizations that can benefit from care coordination. We refer to this group as a market segment. During this preparatory work, you will work with your stakeholders to identify the jobs or tasks that your market segments are trying to accomplish. And then start looking at what gets in the way of them doing this work, which we call pains. And what is helping them do their work, which is called gains. The next step is understanding your market segment is to determine in what way can care coordination address their pains and gains. This is how we will identify our target market served by our care coordination service. Phase one, the organizational profile and strategic thinking are the starting point of self-assessment as it helps your organization carefully consider if a care coordination service truly fits your organizational strengths. The organizational profile Information sets the context for your organization's care coordination service. The strategic thinking validates how care coordination services uniquely fit your organization. Phase two is about understanding how to effectively communicate and bring your stakeholders on board. It's important for an effective community care coordination program to have those stakeholders engaged as partners and collaborators from the very beginning. The goal is to expand your clinical care coordination to community care coordination. Much of this information for this phase comes from the preparation work that you did with your strategic marketing and thinking canvas. And this will guide you in speaking the language of your potential partners and collaborators by helping you to understand the benefit to them. We must be clear on understanding the jobs and the pains and the gains of those that we are aiming to do care coordination with. Then we have to establish commonalities with our organizations. Do we have similar target populations? What are our similar social determinants of health that affect the people that we work with? And finally, we need to think through the relational aspects of coordination. The desired long-term relationships, communication, key messages, and the data needed for those key messages. Phase three, is where your organization determines and documents its ability to do care coordination. What it will take to fully operationalize and finance your care coordination service. 
there are three separate canvases embedded in this section. The care coordination canvas, the product and service canvas, and the financial outlook and forecast canvas. By reviewing the care coordination canvas, your organization can make any needed adjustments to meet the needs of your target market. The product and service canvas helps you think through the communication and technology within your care coordination effort and how to reach out to these new partners. It also assists you in identifying the next key initiatives, the needed key resources, and key partners. The purpose of the financial thinking section of this guide is for your organization to determine the care coordination program's financial outlook. A positive financial outlook is one of many moving parts that contribute to community care coordination sustainability. This section allows you to think through the costs and the revenues of your care coordination program, including the summary of individual financial outlook and forecasts for care coordination. Often this section is in the form of a chart as you see here. In the Sustainable Community Care Coordination materials on our website, you will find a link for a spreadsheet that you can use or adapt for your financial forecasting. It takes your organization through estimating expenses for startup costs, operational costs, both direct and indirect. It helps you think through projected revenue and finally offers you an opportunity to do some forecasting. The Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide includes a workbook for you to record all of your work in for easy analysis. These two tools will help your organization on that journey to value. The Care Coordination Canvas Guide and the Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide. To access these tools, visit ruralcenter.org. Search for the tools by name, Care Coordination Canvas Guide, or Sustainable Community Care Coordination Guide, or you can access them through our resource library by doing a similar search. Or check out the whole Rural Path to Value under Community and Population Health in the Services tab on our website. Please contact either Tracy or myself to learn more about these resources or for guidance on developing your path to value.